This is Studio Block Masters. It's a two-day indoor rock climbing competition in Germany where over 700 competitors from 37 countries compete for the title of Studio Block Master. You'll find everyone from recreational climbers to elite level athletes and retired pros competing at this event. The competition begins with a grueling four-hour qualification round. Root setters put up 80 new boulders in the gym, arranged in four levels of difficulty. Each climber has to get to the top of the 20 hardest boulders they can manage in four hours to accumulate the most amount of points. The top 20 male and female climbers move on to the semi-final round the next day. The top six from the semi move to the final in the evening, and the top three men and women take home some cash. Each boulder is marked with start tags, telling the climber where to put their hands and feet to start the boulder. The top is marked with another piece of tape. A climb is completed when you get both of your hands on the finish hold. Studio Block Masters is held at a gym called Studio Block, which is in a small town called Funkstadt, just a half hour outside Frankfurt, Germany. The competition is incredibly well organized. The website has all the information on the event you could possibly want, including a map of where all the qualifier boulders are, list of the competitors, hotel information, live stream links, you name it. If you're on a national team, they ask that you wear your competition jersey. If you're not on the national team, they'll give you a Studio Block Masters t-shirt to wear. This year, Studio Block Masters hosted tons of talented athletes, including two reigning world champions, climbing's gold medalists from the 2020 Olympic Games, and many World Cup finalists. They also brought in experienced setters from all around the world to help put up almost a hundred high quality boulders on the walls for Studio Block Masters. Before qualifiers, athletes have a chance to look at the boulders they're about to do and figure out how they're going to climb them, what order they want to do them in, and which ones they won't spend as much time on. After all, a four hour qualifier is a marathon in the climbing world and you need to spend your energy wisely. Next, athletes will warm up in the small area left in the gym where there aren't any competition boulders. This makes it so that they can get straight onto the hard boulders when the round begins at 10 a.m. After a quick rules meeting with the head judge, the round begins and athletes scramble around the gym trying boulders and ticking off the ones they've completed on their scorecard. There aren't any judges in the qualifier round, so it's based on the honor system and some motivational cameras. Boulders 1 through 20 are the easiest and are worth the least amount of points. Boulders 61 to 80 are the hardest ones and worth the most points. If you get to the top of boulder on the first try, you get the maximum amount of points for that boulder. If it takes you two or more tries to get to the top, you lose a few points. Since it's an open qualifier, athletes can watch each other and talk to each other about the boulders so they can figure out how to climb them. Many athletes won't get on a boulder until someone else has done it, so you have the best chance of getting to the top on your first try. Every hour, someone will announce the time remaining on the PA system, so you're always in the know. Because the qualifier is so long, you have to make sure you take breaks and stay hydrated and fueled. It's easy to get distracted and feel like you have to keep trying boulders when so many people are getting to the top of hard boulders all around you. At Studio Block Masters, it's also really easy to wear down your skin. There's so many new holds and hard moves, and the qualifier is so long. Oftentimes, your skin will give out before fatigue even has a chance to set in. That said, Studio Block Masters qualifiers is one of the most unique challenges in the climbing competition scene. It's incredibly mentally and physically challenging, and there are so many boulders that it feels like one big climbing playground. It's certainly the hardest competition round I've ever been in, and yet I keep coming back for more.
At the end of the round, you transfer your scorecard to StudioBlock's result site and wait until the second heat of qualifiers are over to see the final scores. And then, of course, at the end of every StudioBlock Masters round, you have to get yourself a hot pretzel. Is this your first time at StudioBlock? It was, yeah. Yes. And how did you like it? I had a blast. I thought it was very chill vibes compared to World Cups. Yeah, it was sick. I felt uh, overwhelmed, actually. <laughs> I feel like there were just so many boulders and uh, so I many things agree. to do at the same time. Yeah. So, it was pretty fun, though. How's yeah. your skin? Holding up. Yeah. Pretty like, there's good. a lot of slab climbing. There was a lot of slab climbing. I feel like it was a good balance of styles, too. Like, a little bit of jumpy, a little bit of slab. Super technical climbing. Yeah. Not compared yeah, to yeah. the US. I was like, yeah, technique is there. I just haven't done it in a while. For real. <laughs> Do you guys ever climb for four hours at a time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a light session for Jesse. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't. Well, boulders yeah. is definitely not for four hours straight. True. I got pretty tired by the end. I was like, I don't know, I think I had like eight boulders at hour three. And I was like, oh, I guess I need to do some more boulders. <laughs> so. So you were trying hard, hard? Yeah. yeah. Semifinals is scored using the international system. The top 20 athletes go into the isolation zone where they wait and warm up without being able to see the boulders in advance. Then the athletes go out in reverse order, starting with 20th place, one by one, and have five minutes to try each of the four semifinal boulders with five minutes of rest between each boulder. These boulders are harder and designed to separate the field by testing specific skills on a wide range of styles in order to find athletes that are up to the challenge of the final round. In semifinals and finals, boulders aren't scored with points. Instead, you're ranked based on how many boulders you can actually get to the top of. If there's a tie, judges take a look at how many zones you got. Zones are marked holds about halfway through boulders that reward a little bit of progress on a boulder. If you get your hand on a zone hold, it gets marked down on your score. If there's a tie for number of tops and number of zones, we look at the number of attempts it took you to get those tops, then the number of attempts it took you to get those zones. This year, I ended up with one top and three zones, which was just short of finals, landing me in ninth place. After semifinals, root setters race to take down all the semi boulders, put a tarp up in front of the wall, and put up the finals boulders. They'll be pre planned so setters know exactly where to put each hold. Finals is scored the same way as semis, except athletes get four minutes on each bowler instead of five. But they get to spend two minutes looking at each bowler with their competitors before the round starts. In finals, athletes once again go out one at a time in reverse order, but all athletes spend their four minutes on boulder one before moving on to boulder two. This is called parade format. Here, there are only ever two athletes on the wall at a time, one male and one female. This puts a spotlight on the athletes that were strong enough to survive all three rounds of Studio Block Masters.
Would you do it again? Heck yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. For sure. <laughs>